Boom! Let's be on this podcast, modest podcast, modest podcast, never the saddest podcast. Today we have a Jamaican American immigration lawyer. Mm. You understand? Remember me had a green card, boss. Remember me, Mark, two times. <laughs> get one green card. We could get two green cards, so just get one. You understand? And we could have get two, but I have two. We could have, have someone green card, and then we could have, like post them at the back right now. So you feel me? <laughs> yeah. So then money I go answer certain questions, debunk certain myths, and we just all the reasons I was asked some questions. Today we have Seku. 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 My, my bad. No, my, my, bad. My, my, bad. My, <laughs> bad. my bad. My bad. And you know, he got to the second best school in um, Jamaica, which is Jamaica College. You know, the first is um, Kingston College. You we understand? We don't that, but we go there. Oh, we're good. <laughs> yeah, well, we're good. So, tell, tell me about your story. Tell me about like growing up in Jamaica, you migrating, all of that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I always have to give God thanks. Um, grew up in Washington Gardens, you know, two really, really good parents, Michael Clark, Alga Clark. Um, dad was my coach my whole life. Went to, well, in high school. So went to JC, came from a strong track family. Uh-huh. Um, mashup ch- champs, uh, mashup KC, en route to winning multiple champs with JC. Which uh, was that, years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Years ago. So, um, but it was our well at that time it was always the division and the way of say yo you run a champs you do well next step is we get a scholarship go oh. to the U.S. So got a scholarship went to University of Florida um, did our thing there as well. But my thing was I'm always looking for the next step. So I knew from like an immigration standpoint, what did I forget? Started out. So I was always looking for a way from when I was in college. So then now um came out of college and was doing the the semi-pro or the pro track thing for like a little bit. And um I had filed for filed for my green card as an athlete. Got denied a bunch of times. Oh uh, um because you can file being an um they call it athlete with extraordinary ability. So like, you know, um, I'd run for Jamaica, et cetera. But it was like really, really challenging. And there was even a point where I was even like out of status uh-huh. and couldn't really move around certain way. So so I had to deal with that for like a little bit. I did my master's, then decided to stop running track. And then that's when I decided to go to law school. Went to law school. Uh, Are you still on a scholarship? No, man. So this was after the scholarship. Done. Okay. So like this was after the scholarship. Done. Bones, bones, bone. Um, I'm a little bit. Then masters. Then went to law school. Um, had a little business on the side doing personal training. So that's how I was like, kind of fun in my life, uh-huh. you know. And track to some extent. Then finished law school, took the bar and um, started working at this small personal injury law firm, making like like 50K a year, you know? And, and at the time I was like, I, like oh. I make it, that was a dream. Then I remember going to this party and this guy running to him and he said, yo, I want you to come to my firm. I think you have to look, everything is great. Do personal injury, but I want you to open up our immigration department. So I said, all right, cool. At the time, my immigration knowledge was just really doing a couple of friends uh-huh. green card. So I said, all right, you know me, take it on. Went to this big practice downtown Orlando, you know, as the only, as the only black person there. But they wanted me as a token guy for kick off the immigration part. But what I didn't know was that it was like real, real, real immigration. So that like my first day, then boom, drop a file on me. I had immigration court the next day. I deal with man who facing deportation with criminal charges, X, Y, Z. All of that. All of that. So it was like a sink or swim, you know? So they take it on head on and um, the immigration thing, they just blew up for me. And it felt natural because I went through the struggle, uh-huh. especially as a, as a Jamaican, and it also felt good helping other Jamaicans. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So other oh, person was a Jamaican? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then stayed with them for like eight months and then started my own firm. So, That's a word. Yeah. So started my own firm, you know, took the leap. I had, um, 
one assist. Well, it was just me, then got one assistant and just took the leap and started to run with it. And um, that was in 2018. And then, you know, I had one employee at the time. Then, you know, with just the grind and the athlete in, in me and the Jamaican in me, fast forward to 2023 now, um, I have over 15 employees, head offices in Orlando. We have offices in Panama City Beach, Florida, New York, Kingston, and we're kicking off Fort Lauderdale in November this year. And uh, what was the time span to get, get to all of these um, locations? So, um, 20, so my first location other than Orlando was in 2019. No, it was during COVID. So it was 2020. So it was 2019, 20, 2020. 20, yeah. Yeah. So it was 2020. And then the way how I saw that jump off, but actually my, my dream was to always have an office in New York, uh -huh. but I was reaching for it, reaching for it, reaching for it, and it just wouldn't connect. So I said, all right, you know, I'm going just fall back. And then Panama City opened up, an opportunity to open up with an employee there, big up Kerry, and it just jumped off. Mm -hmm. So then I met that jump off, and then I said, all right, I'm going to try um, New York again. And by that time, the resources and everything was there for really find a solid place and find a solid lie and employees there okay and then boom it does jump off and then you know the vision is to have at least six offices across the u.s to give more caribbean people more immigrants access to good yeah service. and then if it, if you really had to say you want to be back for the for the country new york is the place to be exactly is the exactly. place to be what yeah, question i'm gonna say we want for we want to answer some questions yeah, where man. enough people always are say or some myths yeah man can a link get you a visa can a link get you a visa link like you know um, yeah man can't see us so cool man i don't want to butcher your name man. mr clark no man so cool you get it all right so cool yeah so cool i'm a dogs man you're good man let's go to the embassy give me a piece of, of jesus you know what i'm saying yeah. got, yeah, 10 year yeah, 10 year put on is yeah. that possible is that a thing the only way that is possible is if you have a tall tall link that works mm. in the embassy have i seen it happen before 100 percent have i seen people get scam and chop more times okay. than, than the actually, link more times than the link okay so you have to have somebody actually from homeland security in the u.s embassy in oh. jamaica that's the only way and then a the next thing to more the audience will know is that a visa is a privilege not a right exactly and to even go further even when you enter the U.S., you just knock upon the door. Immigration up there cannot say, oh, we're not letting you in. Mm. You get me? Now, me, I got you a lot of immigration. No, no, no I not got you nothing crazy. I got you relationship problems. <laughs> you get me? Yeah, yeah, immigration yeah. My immigration process was very smooth. Yeah. My file, like, say, November. No, I'm not lie. My file, like, say, August. I get my work permit, say, uh, November, September, they are on. Mm. No, I, man, I'm tripping. One of them time, I was something that three months. Mm. Then I got my immigration interview date mm -hmm. for April, postponed because of COVID. Okay. So they postponed for like almost a year. So I do my immigration interview January. I'm going to get approved same, same, same day. January 2021. 2021, okay. Yeah, so what well, 2020 was COVID. Yeah. And then the offices opened back and yeah. they rescheduled me for 2021. And honestly, it was a breeze. Mm. The the officer looked for me and told me some of the documents um, wasn't enough for him, but him said, him, him love it. He said, yo, you guys are like a nice couple. I love you guys. I'm going to approve it today. And him, him tell me when, when we bring back the next time mm. for me, I filed for my 10 year, which fortunately, I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, whoever knows us know. I'm not filing with that person no more. Yeah. But yeah. if they ask you, I want to things like tax return, yeah. lease, mm -hmm. kids, bird paper, both name upon bird paper. Things to show that you have a life together. Things like that. Yeah. But is there another way for a Jamaican, anybody living outside of the US to get a green card without getting married? 100%. And, um, you know, that's been one of my missions over the last three years is to show people that that is not the only way. 
um, especially with opening an office in Jamaica, it's just like demystifying that thing that you, you have to get married. So um, there are multiple ways, multiple, multiple ways. I'll start from one, um, a religious way. So mm -hmm. we've been getting a lot of visas approved for people who they have an, a, an affiliation or association with a church. So a church in the U.S. can actually petition for you as a worker and you get an R1 visa. And this is a tip and a trick that, it, that is faster than getting a green card than getting married. So is so R1 visa is would I be like like a residency? No, it's a religious visa. So oh, a yeah. church petitioning for you. So if you belong to a church, even if you belong to a mosque, if you're Muslim or if you're Hindu, a synagogue, or, synagogue or, or anything, a church can petition for you, and that's a really really fast way to get a visa. Next road is if you have a business. So you have a business in Jamaica, and you've mm -hmm. had it for at least two years. And you can prove that you've paid 10 employees full time, right? You can bring that business from Jamaica into the US, right? And then you would be seen as an executive transferee and you get an L1 visa. Then two years after being on the L1, you file for your green card. Mm. I've, I've been doing a bunch of those for and Jamaicans. With, with the L1, are you, can you stay? For yeah. the entire two years, I have yeah. to go up. No, no. So the L1 visas, um, it allows you to stay in the US um, for the entirety of the visa duration. Uh -huh. You can bring your spouse and children under 21. And then after two years, you file for your green card. Okay. So that's the L1. The next one is E2. So you, for instance, um, if you didn't have a green card already, you say, hey, you know what? I want for create a podcast business in the US, right? We would research for you what a podcast business would cost, uh -huh. typically. And then that would have to be your investment in that business. Say it's 40,000 US dollars. That would go under an E2 visa. It's an investment visa where you have to prove that you are irrevocably investing money in a business. So it's not some, some, some for Spend the 40 grand on the podcast or spend 40 grand to USCIS? No, to the business. Okay. So you're investing in the business and you have to show that you are 51% one wow. or other business and you have to show that that business can hire two to three employees over the next three years. And the two to three employees, do they have to be in America or they can be from Jamaica? So they have to be on, a, on an American payroll. Okay. They don't have to physically be in America, but they have to be, yeah. Mm. Um, and you'll be able to get an E2 visa. The E2 visa allow you to travel in and out of the country, stay in there for the three years, um, and work within the business. And again, you can bring your kids. And Are there any can get a green card as well? So that one doesn't lead to a green card, but you can renew it okay. multiple, multiple, multiple times. The next one is the EB5. For, for that one, no, you have to invest either 800000 or a million fifty. So typically the way how I advise my clients is say, yo, invest in some real estate like Airbnbs or something like that to bring the value up to the 800K, then you'll be able to get a green card from that. But you have to, over a time period, show that you have employed 10 full-time employees. Mm -hmm. So there's different, different ways. And then the last one, which I've been doing for Jamaicans a lot, is called an EB2 NIW. So say, for instance, somebody have a master's or they're a nurse, they're an engineer, um, they'd be seen as a skilled immigrant. They can actually file for something called an EB2 NIW, uh -huh. right? But we have to prove that the, the field that they have been in itself national importance. And um, the Biden administration actually expand that. So more people are getting approved with that. If you don't qualify for that, you can qualify through a job offer. Okay. If, if you have like a master's and, and thing. Okay, but, but question though, don't you think like you would have been like a prime example of brain drain? Um, and how do you think it affects Jamaica? So oh, brain drain. Because like the EB2, uh, Optimus Prime, whatever, whatever thing, right? Yeah, yeah. They might take the best. Yeah. <laughs> really and truly. You exactly. know what I'm saying? P yeah. PhDs, masters, all them people, they're gone. Mm -hmm. And I developed for them first world country while we'll sit yeah. there and we need skill workers, we need some new faces in a parliament or the same old man living in a parliament from a band exactly. to know, you know yeah. what I say? You know, feel like that kind of affect the country 
in a, in a negative way? Absolutely. But, I mean, it just depends on how you look at it because if you have those same people, if they go to the U.S., get themselves better, get more capital, right, through more opportunities and then come back to the U.S., I mean, come mm. back to Jamaica and build it up, I think it's a win-win. Mm. But if you leave and have no intention of returning any type of resources to the country, well, then that's where the brain drain takes it. Um, and the remittance is a, is, a, is a big... Um as well. Arena in, in Jamaica. Yeah, huge. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's something that you have to look at as well. But, I mean, you have to evaluate Jamaica on a whole. You know, I mean, most Jamaicans that I talk to, they say it's hard to level up in their company or their jobs because the older people are there, they don't move until they're dead. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's going to deter anybody. You know, so is the country really getting better from keeping the same people there for 20, 30 years? without providing like um a, a a uniform stream streamlined way how that how those younger employees can elevate or even elevate in salary. Agreed. Agreed. So I mean no, me forward back. You know I me? Mean? Yeah. Could I stay over there and about forward back. Likewise. No. Likewise, yeah. A next myth that I love for you debunk. We've been hearing rumors that if a woman should go over in the, the States to have a baby mm -hmm. and she's, well, not undocumented, but, she, undocumented, but she's not a U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. That baby won't be a U.S. citizen. And she will be barred from the U.S. next time upon re-entry. Okay, so, so the first part of that is a myth, okay. whereas um, that baby is not going to be a U.S. citizen. It's not going to be a U.S. citizen. Once you're born there, you're a U.S. citizen. Yeah. As of right now, okay. we don't know if the next administration, you know, election is next year, next year, November, chances are there might be a Republican um, president because, I mean, previously Trump, he was trying to cut out birthright citizenship, whereas from your bond there, you, you get U.S. So Trump was trying to do that. He didn't get it. But chances are, if there's a Republican government that come in, they might try to eliminate that. But as of right now, if your baby born in the US, US citizen. they're a US citizen. Uh -huh. um, uh, but the other part, whereas the mother can suffer repercussions if she intentionally went to the US just to have a child, the answer is it depends. Uh -huh. Right? So um, right now as it stands, if... If a Jamaican national go to the U.S. and just have a child just for that reason, but when she entered the country, if when she, when she's at the border at the port of entry, um, at the port of entry, if she lied and said I'm not pregnant or I'm just coming here for a month, two months, but then hospital records show that she planned to stay, uh -huh. well then they can cancel her visa. So it's all about. So how would they know that she had a baby though? Like that's that's not, that's not like a system. Yeah. So that's another thing that people don't know uh, uh, um, is that once you have a baby in the US, mm -hmm. it's um, it's it's public record for most agencies. So it's okay. easy to associate your name. Once it's on that birth certificate, they'd be able to pull it up. Okay. I get you. You know. So. So like so like let, let's say you now, Billy Ashu, we are about seven months in. Mm -hmm. chances you won't be admitted. Yes. High probability you won't be admitted. I mean, again, it depends on the officer you get and how good you can tell. Because, I mean, I've seen people get away with it where they just say, no, you know, I'm just here for an event. Um, I have my ticket to go back. Uh -huh. And I believe. But I've seen mothers get sent back. So is that a case where you can get sent back without your visa being cancelled? Um, I didn't cancel here. Well, here we are, say, we're not 100 with it. So now I can't see a visa, but mm -hmm. we're not admitted today. Exactly. So I can have your baby and come back. But, yeah. but I've never seen that though. No, I've that has happened. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I don't know if that's possible. Because yeah. I've seen people just get cancer. And next thing I want to know, I know a young lady, her, her visa was canceled at a port of entry. And the reason she told me is because her first trip was supposed to be New York, but she went to Chicago. So you know when you go for your visa, you mm -hmm. see how place you're going to travel, yes, in yeah. New York City. But she got Chicago first. Is yeah. that a reason for them to cancel? Absolutely, because it's a misrepresentation. 
Okay. And they're enforcing that more and more now. So typically, whatever you put on your visa application and during your visa interview, it has to line up with whatever you tell the officer. And they start canceling more. Like this year is the most I've seen people visas get canceled just like that. And I mean, mm. not just Jamaicans. I mean, I have clients from Colombia, Australia, Canada. Them just canceling visas. Canadians. Like, yeah. So Canadians need visa? So they have something called a visa waiver. Mm -hmm. uh, and they deny it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then if they deny the waiver. They'll get a visa. They get a visa and then that can be denied as well. So mm -hmm. this year is the most I've seen people get um, the visas canceled. And what people don't understand, and I keep on telling everybody, is that once you're at the U.S. border, uh, whether it's by land or sea, you have little to no right. So that means all it can takes is phone. reasonable suspicion. Uh -huh. And they can search your phone. They can give you a cavity search. They can go through your messages. They even know how to retrieve deleted messages. Uh -huh. So once them say anything that say, that come work. Yeah, go come work. Boom. That's a wrap. Uh -huh. That is a wrap. So I always tell people say, don't travel with your phone. Have it in your um, have it in check your on. check on. You know? And just whatever you told the officer when you were interviewing for the visa, make sure you tell them the same thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now they even cancel people green card. They go back to the visa application. And if on your visa application you said I um I have one child or I've never been married. Then somehow you get your first green card. If you go to an interview again, you can get an officer that pull your file and say, Hey, um, I see here that you you've been married twice and you have three children. But when you applied from Jamaica, you told us that we applied for the green card? Uh no, applied for the visa. The visa to uh -huh. enter. You said XYZ and it doesn't line up. So everything is a misrepresentation. And they cancel everything. So wait, so they will cancel. So wait, is this at the, the green card interview or you already have your green card? Either one. So, so it can be at the green card interview or even at your second green card interview. Okay. Yeah. But why? But if you have a B1, B2 visitors mm -hmm. and you, 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 you marry and mm -hmm. you adjust your status, you're good same way. They will forgive you per se. It all depends on the officer. Like okay. me, I, I think I was forgiven because yeah. I, I overstayed. Yeah. Um... And but you, you have to be truthful on your farm. Yes. So your farm, there's the a farm. question where they're going to ask you if you overstayed. Mm -hmm. I did put no, you know. <laughs> I did put no. Mm -hmm. And they they're gonna run through every single answer with you for make sure I say it is lined up. So him say, You sure you don't want to change that? And yeah. I said, Oh yeah, 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 my bad. I don't and you just change it and you're good to go. But the, again, the yeah. officer play a big part. Huge role. Huge, huge role. It's not a robot yeah. idea where it's like, you say A and him just respond to A. It's yeah. like, him just can't say A and like, him like, oh, you're yeah. sound when you say A, she has a B instead. And then, even when you get your citizenship, uh -huh. them, them still line up everything. Truth be told, like, when I went to do my citizenship, it's the first time in the US I've ever suffered discrimination, brother. And the officer was a Jamaican woman. Mm. It was a Jamaican woman the woman accused me of being in a gang and re, re, re. And I was like, lady, you have my history. I'm in law school, blah, blah, blah. Why you give me a, a hard time and you're a Jamaican? The lady was completely disrespectful for no reason from the interview start. And she did not approve it. She did not approve it. There was no reason. And she said, you have to get seven years tax return. I have to prove this and that. I'm saying, yo, this is, this is crazy. And she never approved it. And I had to write a letter to um, the senator and said, look, man, this lady has discriminated against me. She did not approve my citizenship for no valid reason. Uh -huh. And they moved my file to another officer. And within three weeks, they called me from a naturalization interview. And this was a Jamaican woman. So, again, the officer has a lot to okay, do with yeah. it. Because yeah. I was my immigration interview, the man literally tell me, say, yeah. I'm going to tell him what bring. bring pictures, obviously. Mm. And again, pictures with you and your spouse is not enough. They no, want group it's pictures. never enough. Yeah. They want a lot of group pictures. They want to mm -hmm. see different races. They want to see college friends. And yeah. you're supposed to identify who is who. You can't bring far the pictures from one night out. Yeah. Or from your wedding. Mm -hmm. and, and they will look at the age mm -hmm. of your face, your weight, how long it was your hair, all of that. Trust yeah. me. You get me? Yeah. So that's one thing. But I'm going to say, I bring pictures, I bring joint bank accounts. 
What else? Lease. My name could go up on a lease, I'm never charged. I will suit her with that too. My name could go up on a lease, I'm never charged. Um, what else? I don't know, bro. We'll, we'll bring things though. Is bring it enough, enough things. Yeah. But whenever I'm not tax because at the same time I get my social, like it was a small gap between yeah. me and social. Mm. And the man said, I'm not approving them, I like them. And the questions them, he asked me the same questions them, he asked she, just probably in a different way. He mm. asked him, he married before. They look at things they have to know. And do not lie in the interview. If you That's don't know, say you don't know. So, for instance, if them say, yo, um, what's your spouse, mother's name? Say, you know, I don't know her name, I just call her mom, or I call her Auntie D, or, mm -hmm. you know? Simple as that, because yeah. that's real life. Yeah, yeah, people really don't know them really don't spouses. Know them. Yeah. Be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So just don't lie. Yeah. You get me? But my other friend now, him they go to the interview, they call him back for a second interview. Yeah. And you know, when they give him green card, them send it out when COVID both hit. When immigration was shut down, them yeah. just like, like she just looked on her desk. Yeah. And just said, no, I'm not going to send it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, she yeah. never done again. Mm. And then there's a, there, there's a, there was a rule or a law that my father answer with in 120 days. Mm -hmm. But they will break the law. Yeah. All, all the time. time. <laughs> all the time. USCIS will not stick to their timelines and they will not give you your money back. Mm hmm So, all right. So, like me, you know, they have a charge. No, I, I had a misdemeanor, a petty crime, mm -hmm. retail theft. Never, I never had no lawyer because I read up, I think it's a crime of moral turpitude. Crime, crime involving moral turpitude. Yeah. yeah. So that means it's a small charge per se. Yeah. But what about the people that have felonies? Yeah. How, how them go about? You, you think they should definitely seek representation? 100%. 100%. Because mm -hmm. the way how it's set up, especially with being deported. So the law is if you get if you get charged for a crime involving moral turpitude within your first five years of being in the country, you are considered deportable. Mm -hmm. If you get two crimes involving moral turpitude, period, while you're in the US, you are deportable. However, once you get a, a, an aggravated felony, which is a level above a crime involving moral turpitude, you're automatically going into deportation proceedings. So mm -hmm. which crimes are, for, for, are forgivable and which crimes you can't come back from, the one that you can't come back from is anything that involves trafficking. Domestic abuse. Yeah. No, domestic abuse, you can't come back from it. Okay. Yeah. But crimes involving drug trafficking and gun charges, it is 95% you can't come back from it. It's very, very rare that we're able to save you. So, like, even now, I really don't take cases like that where somebody have you know, drug trafficking, um, like especially if it's like cocaine. Weed, it depends on the state. Mm -hmm. I'll take that because no weed is a little bit more flexible. But if it's like cocaine trafficking um, or over a certain weight or anything that involved a, a gun where a gun was fired, there's no comeback. You're going to get deported and it's close to impossible to get you back here. Mm. Crimes outside of that, we can fight it. We can fight it on different grounds, like grand theft. Um, I mean, even battery with a weapon. That's like not a gun. Huh? Okay, my icon. Okay, my icon. No, no, no. And um, the thief in girlfriend care. Oh, okay. Yeah, but so I'm mean, like a grand theft auto So, so yeah. I'm making no there's hope. Yeah, man. There's hope for them. Yeah, man. So them things they can come back from. <laughs> I've done it. I, you know, my team. I've done it all mm -hmm. the time. So, question though, is it that case where like. That's like a criminal division of your, your, your firm, or like you yourself can fight that as well? Um, so, when I started my firm, I made sure I can do everything okay. in it. No, it's a, little bit, it's a little bit more specialized. So, I have a criminal attorney, I have a specialized deportation attorney. If it's a really, really big case, I'll jump in mm -hmm. and do it. So, to answer your question, yeah, we have different divisions now for deal with deportation that just deal with immigration court versus just paperwork filing. Okay. Yeah. Mexico. The Mexican border that these that Jamaicans thing, no. have been crossing like a motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Do they have the... the is there a possibility for them to adjust? Or do so, they have to come back home and enter legally? Or them can adjust from over there? What are the options? So... If you cross the border and you did not get a stamp saying that you were paroled in the country, you cannot adjust through marriage without returning to your home country. I think unless you're married to a military. 
No, officer. even if you're married to a military. The only way you don't you don't have to come back to Jamaica is if you file for asylum and your asylum was granted. Okay. So, I mean, filing for asylum and you get your work permit and you're good is completely different from filing your asylum and your asylum was granted and you are now, and you now have asylee status. That way you don't have to leave the country. But if you try to get married to a U.S. citizen, um, you cannot adjust your status in the country. You have to leave and go back to, come back to Jamaica or your home country and then re-enter. Okay. Because you had an uninspected illegal entry. And, and do, do you face like more scrutiny approaching a port of entry, knowing that you didn't come here illegally before? No. Mm -mm. Okay. No, man. No, man. Once your paperwork line up properly and the lawyer did the job, you should, and you were honest to your lawyer, you'll be good. Okay. Now, asylees. Mm -hmm. If to so file asylum, you have to be like in danger. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you 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 have to fear for your life because you fear a persecution because you belong to a certain group. A certain group. Okay. Yeah. Can you go back to your country? Um, not under asylum status, no. And typically, not even under green card status. I mean, you can't chance it, but sometimes but officer chance, would. You have a chance, it like a case where you go. Like say Panama, then from Panama to exactly, Jamaica, but yeah. not straight to Jamaica. Exactly, exactly. Okay. But when you're a citizen, it doesn't matter. Okay. You know, so like that's that's a big thing that you know, like a lot of Jamaicans will take into consideration. That once you go down that road, you have to really accept. So you, you know, it, it's, don't with that. Yeah, yeah. Until you're a citizen. Until you're a citizen. Yeah. So what, what's that? Give, give me like a case where you just never really have no hope for. Um, but it still turn out and you get the people that when I'm supposed to get. Um, um, I mean, there's been so many. You know, I mean, one of my first ones that come to mind is a is a yard man, uh, a Jamaican who got caught with with a gun in the car, gun under the seat, mm -hmm. and um, he was married to a U.S. citizen, but she wanted to file for divorce, so. So we had to take it to, to court and do a trial. And funny enough, the way how we actually beat the case is um, because the prosecutor was trying to say the gun belonged to him. Mm -hmm. And he was asking him, he's like, do you know the owner of the gun? And he, he never know the dog name. Mm -hmm. He was using a nickname, like said Blacker. And he was saying, see, your honor, he's lying. Um, it's his gun, Ray, Ray, Ray. So I had to jump in and say, yo, the Jamaican culture, most people don't know people by them, no, their no, first no. name. And that was kind of like the turning point and we're able to sell it, say, yo, he didn't, he didn't own the gun, it was black a gun. And he got his green card and he was fighting with the, his wife for like three, four years for getting the green card and mm -hmm. he got his green card in court for two weeks. So that was a, a big win because normally, as I said earlier, Gun charge, wow. it's, it's, it's almost impossible for me. So that was a big win. Um, you know, the church thing, I've seen, I got a family who was in the U.S. for like three, four years. I mean, nice no, Christian family. You know, them just overstayed three, four years. And they had a son there who had overstayed with them. And he was 17 and he was turning 18 in three weeks. And I was able to get him an R1 visa. Mm -hmm before him turn 18, and then now he's going to be able to can file for them. Oh, so like okay. certain wins like that, and you know, most of the people who, um, one that stand out in, in my mind, this Jamaican lady, she met a guy, the guy say, yo, you know, they'll get married, she'll get her papers, very, 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 so them get married in Jamaica. She come back, no, she was in Jamaica, the guy come back and say, yeah man, just, just come back and we live together and everything good. She reached at the airport and the man never answered her phone again. So she she sell off all her things in Jamaica, mm. reach at the airport, nobody's there for pick her up. So that means uh, we now have no evidence to prove that they ever lived together. No evidence that they even knew each other. She didn't even have wedding pictures. Mm -mm. And we were able to get our, our green card based on VAWA. That it a was, violence against women? Yeah, basically right. that 
the, the man abandoned the marriage. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge dream because we never have no evidence that they had a life together. Gotcha. So that was a big win for us because that one day I was like, I told her straight up because I always tell people say, oh, you have less than a 30% chance I get of getting approved. So if you want to spend the money, spend it. But these are your ads. Yeah, man, I like selling a dream Yeah, right ma, now. Ma, ma, I always keep it 100 with them. And I told her, I was like, listen, um, I really don't even want to take your case, but you're a Jamaican. But I told her, you have 20% chance or less than this being successful. And the thing get approved was, I, I was so surprised. She come off his and ball along the place. And, oh, uh, yeah, you know, tears are joy. Yeah, yeah, man, tears are joy, man. So, I mean, plenty of little cases like that are memorable, you know? Yeah. For really, really help people realize their dream and their potential. Prison. Mm. Let's say an immigrant um, serve time, prison time, mm -hmm. and them get released, but they're still in they're still in the United States. They weren't deported. So let's use Bojo Bantan versus Flipper Mafia. Similar charges, drug charges. One is still in the United States. One is not in the United States. Why is Flipper in the United States? Well, you answer now, but may I ask you as a lawyer, like mm. what were is options and what was Buj options and why probably Buj never get them options there, I've never exercised them options. Eh? All right, so we'll flip our options now. I mean, you can plead to the court and say that, you know, if you return to Jamaica, you will be tortured or you will for sure be killed. So the law says you more likely than not will be tortured or um, tortured or killed. It's called Convention Against Torture, and that allows you to stay in the U.S., mm -hmm. you'll get a work permit, um, and you stay under that status. So there's so that. You don't, you don't go to a green card level? No. No, you can't transition from a green card. But you can't, you can't say, like, get married to a U.S. citizen okay. and adjust, but that allows him to stay even though he had that charge. So that is the only defense when you have a felony or a drug trafficking charge um, is convention against torture but it's a very high high burden and um less than 20 percent of those cases in the u.s gets approved okay yeah because i think when you flip flipper case like there were co-defendants who got deported and they was like wondering why he didn't get deported yeah and i think he said the same exact term on the show as well yeah so i mean those type of cases you really have to have strong strong corroborating evidence to really prove that yo you were threatened. You have um, evidence to show that you were threatened and that chances are, if you go back to your yard, you will be tortured and killed. Okay. Next question. Is there any possible way to come back to the United States if you are deported? Yes, yes. And we've done it. So, I mean, again, one, it depends on the type of charge that cause you to get deported you know mm -hmm. so again if his charges outside of drug trafficking and gun gun offenses most gun offenses you can come back like say if you had a u.s citizen child that is 20 that's now 21 they can petition for you and you can prove that that they are going through hardship because you are in in jamaica or if you have a spouse so the way how you'd go about it is they'd have to file a waiver Mm. And we'd have to prove the hardship that that U.S. citizen is now going through. And they need you in the U.S. So once that waiver gets approved, then we can proceed with the, the rest of the filing to bring them back into the U.S. Okay. The man them all up, come here, come breathe the girl. Mm. And go out of fire. Mm -hmm. If they were a U.S. citizen at the time, this baby was conceived. Mm -hmm. Or this baby did born. Is that baby automatically a U.S. citizen, even though the baby was born in Jamaica? So it also depends on how long they were a U.S. citizen for. Okay. You know, but... So like, let's say me just, me just get sworn in. Mm -hmm. That's a Jamaican baby then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, if I do like a five years... Yeah. That's an American baby. It's an American baby. And then how you go but, about it? Though? So you'd have to fire through like the consulate in Jamaica. Okay. And it wouldn't be filing for their citizenship. It would just be filing for their passport. So you'd file okay. for the passport of the child. It's called an, N, um, an N600. You file for the passport and then they, re, they come back into the country on that passport. Then you get them an actual naturalization certificate. Okay. Yeah. So it would be the passport that you file for. 
Okay. Yeah. And then, and then is, is there a timeline to this? Like, let's say the kid is not a kid no more. It's an 18-year-old man, 18-year-old mm-hmm. woman. Can they still get that or do you have to go through a different avenue? Yeah, so at that point, no, you'd have to um, file for a green card for them. Okay. You know, typically you'd want to do it before the child is like two, is what I always advise, before the child is two. Um, outside of that, you're going to have to file for the green card first and then have them come in. And then one catch to that is if you are the U.S. citizen, you want to prove that you lived in the U.S. for some point in time. Okay. Yeah. All right, well... I don't know if I have any questions. May I forget our things that people always say and, you know, try mm. to debunk. But just want to congratulate you, yeah. bro, on your journey. Much as, respect, a, as a Jamaican, we yeah, really man. go over there and have, like, locations in all of these places and you come back here too. Yeah. And I, I, I would love to say, actually, they are Jamaican because I, I remember one time I was looking for an immigration lawyer out here and it was so hard to find. Yeah, a U.S. immigration lawyer. Yeah, yeah. It, it's very, very hard to find. And then now you there, so now as a born Jamaican, we kind of mm. understand the struggle and understand certain yeah. things. So, and then both sides as well. Yeah. You know, college over there, so yeah. you, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, congrats. Is there anything you have any you have any question that you have? You know, we want to ask. Yeah. So the one common question mm-hmm. I always get is people always say, "All right, if I get denied my visitors visa, um, what are the chances of me reapplying and getting it?" So I'm always tell people say, the biggest thing that you want to prove when you're reapplying for your visitors visa is you have to show that you have ties to Jamaica. You have to show that. You have a consistent job, you have reference letters, you have financials to show. You want to show them that you're going to come back to your yard. You have a car, you have assets. Exactly. And you cannot lie to them. You cannot lie to them and say, oh, I don't have family in the US. I don't have a sister. I don't have a mother. You have to tell them Mm -hmm. all those things, but you have to prove that you have strong ties to Jamaica. And you're not entitled to the visa. You know, you're not entitled to the visa. You're not entitled to the visa. Yeah, it's the lowest... And you can't appeal it if they deny you. It's the lowest. Approval? Uh, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's the lowest. Mm-hmm. Well, in, in Jamaica, it's overall, it's like US. Over, um, overall, the visitor's visa is, have the lowest strength out of all of the visas. And, and, and K1 and K2 visas, explain that, fiancé visas. Yeah, so the fiancé visa basically is if you are engaged to a US citizen, but you can prove that you guys have been in a relationship for the last year or two. Prove through text messages, um, you Western, know, Union Western receipts. unions. You have to be able to prove that you are, you are in a relationship. Itineraries, and, visiting, and, and you've forth. seen them. You have to have seen them physically. Then they can file a K-1 visa. Um, once that gets approved, you're able to enter the U.S. on the K-1 visa and you must get married within 90 days. And you cannot adjust with another spouse. So if you go up on a K-1 visa, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to be a lawyer, I know some things, huh? I know (laughs) some things. Yeah, man, you know some things. Cool, man. Cool, man. Yeah. If you go up on a K-1 visa, and you say, all right, then me and that spouse are not work out, you get somebody else, that person cannot adjust your status, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, later on down the road, you can but do you have to come back and then go up? Um, no. Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the flip side to that, which I, I see a lot of people get jammed up with this, is if you did a marriage and the marriage was determined to be fraud, where you exchange money and the case was denied, you can no longer get any type of U.S. immigration benefit. Mm. So if your first case got denied and they say, yo, this was marriage fraud, even if your next marriage did real is real, you have kids, everything. everything, it will get denied. If you if you have a child that is now 21 and then petition for you, it's going to be mm-hmm. denied. Yeah. So it's not worth the 15000 Yeah. It's not worth the 10000 yeah. It's not worth mm-hmm. the 20000 Just do it right the first time. And then my case, so like me, you know, we get my two-year green card. And then I get divorced within that 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 time span for file for my ten year. What what were my options? I already know, but more you explain to them. Yeah, so you had two um two options. So you file a waiver, which is you you file it without your wife basically saying that um 
you know, you and your wife, you're no longer together. But when you did get married, you were in a legitimate I'm marriage. Horrified. You're in a bona fide marriage and you have all of the evidence to show that, well, then you can file that way. Your other option is to file a VAWA. Mm -hmm. Basically saying that your, um, your wife either physically, psychologically, or financially abused you. And um, as a result, you're not eligible for a VAWA, which is you were married to a U.S. citizen, they abused you, and you have good moral character. Then that's a self-petition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then my next friend now, the situation is different. He never get the green card. So like the wife caught upon him, like interviewed it, mm -hmm. and then filed a VAWA. Is there a chance for him? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. It have to file properly and file right though. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna say we can't ask questions for days, but yeah. Mr. Clark, big up Much yourself, respect. bro. Many yeah. people know them can find you, they don't know where your Kingston office there, all of that. All right, so you can find me across all social media platforms and it's at attorney seku, attorney S E K O U. And you can call 800 one people and it's O N E people and it can take you to the Jamaica office. The website is clarklawgroup.com. You'll see the address there for our Jamaican office. It's right next to what the name of the hotel. Can't remember what the name Which of the one? hotel. Which one? New Kingston? Yeah. Our hotel? No, my dad a popular hotel that everybody. Pegasus, Wyndham. Um New Kings. AC? Yeah. Okay. It's next to AC Hotel. Um, but all the information is at clarklawgroup.com. Or you can go on my Instagram or TikTok at Attorney Seku and you see all of the information here. We, we can't hide. Come can't find hide. us. Let's be honest, we're gone.